Hello there and welcome to my workshop. Today's video is actually taken from some lost footage or footage that I, I took last year that uh, I lost and uh, I've regained. It actually fits in quite nicely with the series of videos that I'm making right now, uh, leading people in or new interested people into CNC machines, in particular routing. So last year I sold my beautiful 6040 CNC router to a friend who happened to come into my workshop and asked me if he could buy it and um, I sold it. Um, and I have regretted that decision ever since so uh, I'm actually going to order the, exactly the same machine again um, in January because it was a very good little machine uh, and it fits into what I do in my workshop as well as this intermediate machine that I have made. But a lot of you out there will be buying 6040 CNC routers. So this first couple of videos is unboxing, setting up, and setting up with Mac 3, which a lot of you out there will be doing. So I hope you enjoy them, and uh, don't forget, like, subscribe, and don't forget if you'd like to become a patron to the channel, patron information is below this video in the video description area, and that would help me out greatly because it is the patrons that keep this channel going. So, enjoy, and I'll see you at the end. This really is a special little 6040. Um, it's quite heavy. Uh, the all up package weight here is approximately, I think it's around about 90 kilos. At least it felt that way. And it's packaged really, really well. double package them then um, you know there's less likelihood of any damage uh, you know can be uh, done to the packet the, the item inside the package so uh, you can tell it's fairly heavy because I'm having a little bit of trouble here trying to get it off but uh, you know, one person can do it if I can do it you know most people can I think So minimal tools to uh, open the package, just something to cut the uh, steel uh, band in there. And uh, just an ordinary claw hammer and a bit of a uh, Tommy bear, I think they used to be called. So it's a fairly easy process to uh, undo the the package if you have you know the the correct tooling to do it. But I suppose you could use a hammer and screwdriver. The top comes off fairly easy. Now inside the package, everything is wrapped up really well it's actually um, strapped down to the the base so it can't move so I'll give you a good look all around there and everything is clean and dry I'm sure a lot of you have maybe just noticed that, hey, the gantry's attached. This really is a plug and play unit. It is all intact. You don't have to bolt anything on anything. So now I'm just going through the different parts that uh, come with it. Open the little toolbox there and 
show you that's the um, Z height tool setter and a spare fuse and what else have we got oh, USB cable and oh, that's for the coolant and set of complementary cutters and this is a set of um, yeah 20 collets all, uh, all the way up to 12 12 millimeter I think uh, 3 millimeter is the smallest this is the uh, pump for the coolant the larger pump for the coolant to give you more pressure This is the fourth axis. Now, this isn't a flimsy fourth axis. This is one. Um, it's it's a, a really decent job. So it's not a toy one like uh, normally is supplied with a, a sixty forty or a um, what a thirty forty. This is not a toy. Well, this is the electrical unit and you'll note well, when I get it the right way up this is actually uh, aircraft quality this is an aluminium case and of course well, aircraft uh, quality uh, connectors as well so this is uh, me and my mate Steve lifting it out, and it is definitely a two-person lift. It's about 60 kilograms, which is, oh look, about 120 pounds, thereabouts. There's a lot of metal in this. Everything about this machine has been over-engineered by a factor of about 10, I think. Uh, this is an LED light, so you can I, I always like good light, so uh, I had them put a LED light on as well. Uh, this is a two, this is the upgrade to the 2.2 kilowatt. Okay, so here's a, a look around the back, and it's much of the same. Very very strongly built. All axes have proximity sensors. There's one there for the X. There's one down there for the Y, and there's one hidden inside here for the Z of which there's a little screw back in there that you can adjust up and down to actually fully adjust it as indeed you can adjust all of them now the umbilical cord now I've seen lots of people on the internet they do complain about oh the leads are too short well I think we've solved that now that isn't a standard length that is five feet from where you see it come out of the um, the box section there it's five feet long <laughs> these of course are the coolant the orange one is uh, for the tool coolant and the blue pair here this is a feed and return to the spindle and I'll show you how to connect that up a little bit later. This here is the drain back to the uh, coolant pump or tank. Uh, that, that would be for the, uh, the flood coolant. If you're cutting aluminium, brass, copper, you know, uh, soft metals um, and stone. So um, I'm just fitting up the fit in there. I'm putting a bit of thread tape, a bit of Teflon thread tape on the thread there. Just give it a bit of a good seal. And uh, I'll put it in the top of the, the pump. Uh, there's no need to sort of do it up too tight, just uh, really firm. Uh, just thread in the pipes in through and uh, onto the top of the, the pump there. But if it's on, pretty well you know if, it, if it's really if it's a really cold day you might have a bit of trouble getting that on so just warm it up and uh, you know with it with some hot water the end of the pipe that is and it'll go on a lot easier so
So if you notice the, the tank is a third full of water there and that's uh, distilled water uh, or if you have rain water you can use that uh, and then you put uh, a third of antifreeze in and then a second or well, third 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 of um, clean fresh water again no chemicals in the water other than the coolant the coolant's there for two purposes uh, we live in Tasmania and it does get frosty it is possible to freeze and more importantly I suppose equally as important um, inside the spindle housing itself um, it's basically 90% stainless steel uh, you know with the galleries and everything but there are aluminium parts in there okay so this control box is actually made of aluminium this is made military grade and these are all um, actually Air Force, uh, not Air Force, but should we say aviation plugs. Okay, so everyone's labelled. So we're going to start off with the bottom row down here. Start off with the X, which is this one. X lead. And there's a little, little lug there. So it'll only, it, it matches up with a little lug in here. So it'll only go in one way. Push in firm. Do this little retaining collar up not too tight only do it up with your fingers all right x y match the lugs up push in retaining collar it only takes a few minutes to do this z try not to tangle the cables up Try and keep them Z angles Z finger tight. Now the A isn't required. We're not using the A at the moment. The A axis cable comes on the end of the A axis, so that one doesn't get plugged in until you use it. In fact, if you want to, you can also remove the X and plug the A axis in there and slave the X. I'll show you how to do that at a later date. Okay, calibrator, there we go. This is the little tool setting uh, device. And I'll show you how to use that too. I'm probably on another video now. I'm not gonna have enough room on this one. Now then, light. Careful not to over tighten these and limit limit switches, axes limit switches that is. And the last one, the biggest one, this is the spindle. He goes up here. And he goes in there. Okay, now then, the next cable is your USB cable. Now I, I need a, a little longer one, so this is one of my own. He just plugs in, I just put him over the other side there. And the mains power, in our case in Australia and most other countries, it's 240 AC. And that one goes in there. And that's a computer type uh, plug, standard computer type plug. So there you go. That's the control box connected up. There is one more plug that we need to put in, and that is the coolant pump plug, and that just plugs in there like that. Okay, so after you've loaded Mac 3 and you've put all the drivers in, um, you need to go into config and motor tuning. Now in these little boxes down here, you put in this one here, uh, steps per uh, 322.58, 322.58, 322.58, 322.58, 322.58, 322.58, 322.58, 322.58, 322.58, 322.58, 322.58, 322.58, 322.58, 322.58, 322.58, 322.58, 322.58, 322.58, 
Uh, this one here for, loss, for velocity, uh, put in 250. And this one here for acceleration, put four. Now you do that for the three axes. Okay, now that is enough to get you, you going. So here you are, it's all working and fairly accurate within a 0.2 of a millimeter or so. Uh, now if you go to my YouTube tube channel, uh, go into uh, videos and uh, you go to video number 198. Now in there I go into great detail of how to um, perform uh, accuracy te uh, testing and adjustments within Mac 3 with your CNC machine. Uh, I do do it on a, a SIG mini mill that I converted, but uh, the process is exactly the same. So um, there's that. And um, you have a working CNC. 6040 straight out of the box on USB straight onto a laptop computer. Well there you have it. So the next couple of videos now um, I will give this little mini this little 6040 um, some things to machine. Well I hope you like uh, the video today of the unboxing and the simple plug and play of 6040. And it really is the Rolls Royce version or model of the 6040 CNC Rotor World. Uh, thank you for watching and subscribe to my channel. So um, thank you for joining me and uh, it's bye for now.